The British Empire built roads, schools and hospitals across much of the world. It ultimately also abolished slavery, but the empire also committed some horrific atrocities in its conquest. Just as American history is clouded by being built on the backs of the wicked slave trade, but illuminated by its defeat of the Nazis and communism. History is complicated. The past is riddled with terrible and heinous acts committed in less enlightened times. That is a fact, but it's also a fact that none of these things are your fault. They're not my fault either. We weren't there. Just as it's preposterous, in my view, to blame King Charles for the toxic masculinity of Henry VIII, which some people are doing. It's unhinged to imagine that today's generation can or should bear responsibility for their ancestors, isn't it? The self-flagellation is the vogue. There's viral currency and apologising for everything in our past to vaunt our virtue today. Well, that's what the actor Alan Cumming has done by handing back his OBE in a flurry of indignant rage. It was given to him by the late Queen in 2009. He blamed the toxicity of empire, adding he'd been grateful at the time, but now his eyes are opened. Really, Alan? They were shut, were they, for all those decades that you were alive as a supposedly intelligent man? You had no idea about the British Empire? Nah, it's not really true, is it, Alan? Just the Queen's now no longer here, so you feel emboldened to go on a little PR rampage about how disgusted you are by the whole thing. He doesn't quite realise it, Mr Cumming, but really, that's the point of this. It seemed fine at the time, but fashions and sensibilities have changed, and by today's standards, it all seems terrible. But history itself, of course, stays the same. Sustained assault on the past isn't just irritating, it has direct consequences. The royal family now is repeatedly hounded by demands for apologies wherever they tour the world. The ferocious debate about reparations to the descendants of slavery in the US is toxic and divisive. It makes ordinary people who have nothing at all to do with slavery and detest the whole notion of it feel like they're under attack for something that they had nothing to do with. It reduces us to oppressors and the oppressed instead of simply people who mostly want to make the world a better place. Tearing down statues, renaming buildings, endlessly apologising for our ancestors might make some sensitive people feel better about themselves and get them a few likes on social media. But does it make the world a better place? Well, joining me now are author and playwright Bonnie Greer, OBE, and academic Professor Nigel, Nigel Bigger, CBE. <laughs> Professor Bigger's latest book on colonialism was cancelled by the publisher for concluding that the British Empire was not all bad. Plus the commentator and best-selling author Douglas Murray, as yet shamefully unhonoured. And we intend to correct that by the end of this programme, <laughs> Douglas, so get you something out of this at the very least. Um, all right, let's start. Bonnie, you have an honour, which you accepted. It's the Order of the British Empire. What did you think you were getting? Are you going to pull an Alan Cumming? I, think it's, I, think I, I had no idea. I, I think it's the office, officer of the British Empire. Oh. You're commander of the British I am, Empire. Yes. I thought it was order. Is no, it? no, <laughs> officer. So you're an officer of the British I'm Empire? I'm an officer and, and I just commander. Well, how does your role as officer of the British Empire square with your criticism of the British Empire? Well, for one thing, um, I took the honour, uh, Piers, on behalf of my late father. He was here for D-Day. He was in a segregated army. The British people were wonderful to him. He loved his country and he loved the people. And I took it on his behalf because no one gave him a medal at all. And I told the now King Charles exactly why I did it. And he said, thank you. So I love that story. So when my, when, uh, at my mother's funeral, I pinned the medal on her dress. So it's, it's for my dad. So it meant a lot to you? It meant a lot for me because of my father's So service. when you see Alan coming, and that's a, that's a great story, by the way, and it's wonderful to hear that, because all you hear at the moment is all the negative stuff from the British past. That's a nice story. It's a positive story. But when you hear Alan coming in this fit of rage, hurling back his honour and saying he's just woken up to the reality of the horrors of the British Empire... What is your response then? Well, I was giggling a little bit when you did your uh, opening oratorio because actually he would have known this, especially being a Scot, about the but British Empire. I mean, that's a natural thing. Um, you know, no empire, and I don't know what you've written, Nigel, but no <laughs> empire by definition is a good thing because what it actually is about is about someone has to be oppressed to be but in an empire. Does it, but history, but, history, in my opinion, but here's where I come at all these things. Yeah. History is nuanced, right? Yes. Current history will be nuanced. Yes. Uh, what we went through 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 1,000 years ago, everything is nuanced in the sense there's good and bad in all these uh, exactly, eras. Exactly, exactly. But then we go back to, and I'm just thinking automatically of 
uh, the, the, the first strike of Indian independence, which is called the Indian Mutiny, I think they would disagree with the idea of empire. They would disagree with the empire. So was Alan Cumming wrong to hand back his honour? Uh, he was right because he wanted to do it, but the reason he did it, I don't really... I mean, if he didn't know that, I don't mm. know... I don't know and what to, that, to and say. And to those who say, well, Bonnie, you know, you're, if, you're, if you're that concerned about the British Empire, how do you feel comfortable having a title given to you by the royal family on behalf of the monarchy, which, of course, was a major part of the British Empire? Uh, how do you feel about keeping that honour as an officer of the British Empire, if you feel that way about what the Empire did? I, as I said, I did it for my dad. I understand I that. Did, I did it but for my I'm dad. Just about... And hang on. And, and, I get that, but what about you so, personally, your views well, of the Empire Well, I never now? say OBE. People call me that. They'll put it up behind my name. I never, ever say anything about the OBE. But I won't relinquish it, and it's because of my father. OK. Uh, Nigel, you wrote a, a book... Professor, to give you a proper title, but you wrote a book about... Uh, Colonialism, a moral reckoning. It was cancelled by Bloomsbury. I mean, we live in this absurd world now where publishers are censoring authors after they commission books and tell them, what are you going to write about? And they say this, and they say, great. And then you write about it, and then they cancel you. Yep. Which, apart from anything else, is ridiculous. So I, I just think publishers are making themselves look absurd. But what was the pretext of your book? And what is the overview that you drew in conclusion about the British Empire? The, the British Empire, I mean, you mentioned uh, slavery, um, uh, and, and that's true. For 150 years, the British were involved in slaving other people, Af Africans, like everyone else in the world. Mm. I mean, even in... in uh, um, I was in North Carolina um, earlier this month and went to the Museum of the History of North Carolina, which told me that in 1860, on the eve of the American the Civil Cotilde, War... The Cotilde, the Cotilde. 30,000 emancipated slaves, yeah. some of whom kept slaves themselves, right. which is so common. But in the early 1800s, Britain was among the first states in the history of the world, the history of the world, to abolish the slave trade and the leader in suppressing the slave trade all over the world from, Bra from, from Brazil N to Malaysia. Nigel, may I just ask you a question? I'm yep. sorry to interrupt you. Yep. And I would ask you this because you know more about this than me. What I understand is that the abolition of the slave trade was partly a reason, a, a way for the ro Royal Navy to have supremacy on the seas. In fact, the Royal Navy boarded slave ships and, and this was more about the Royal Navy than it was about abolition of slave well, you, trade. Yeah, you, you, you're kind of saying that uh, um, the Royal Navy wanted to exert itself and so freeing slaves was one way to do it. That's kind of back to front. I mean, the Royal Navy uh, spent, uh, in, the mid, in the 1830s, spent about 13% of its total manpower just manning uh, um, ships from the coast of West Africa to stop slavers. Uh, and uh, 17,000 sailors died of disease. Uh, it was enormous. Nigel, out of interest, why was your book cancelled by your publisher? Why didn't they publish uh, uh, it? Um, a reliable source tells me that, that woke junior employees in, in right. Bloomsbury Publishing protested against publishing anything they, they didn't, didn't agree with. And for some reason, I don't understand, the, the grown ups in senior management uh, caved in. But that is the problem, isn't it, in this culture, is that you've got these very young woke employees who buy into all these narratives, and then they think it's completely right to work for a publisher supposedly supporting free speech in a democratic society like, the, like Britain. And they think it's fine to actually try and get that author cancelled because they don't agree with some of the stuff you've written. Piers, can I say something, too? I mean, woke... I'm, I'm so unhappy about that name being taken over. Because we're going to talk about history. Woke was a, a signal to... A, in, we're talking about slavery. To people escaping from slavery, they used the word on the Underground Railroad. That was one of the signals... Well, it was mainly, they, actually... They know they were in well, the Well, I wrote a whole house. book about this. And, uh, you know... It, Let me it, say, it was, like, Woke okay. actually began mainly in the 60s in the black music community in America. And it was established as a way of expressing... A, a bigger awareness of social and racial injustice. I completely sign up to that. By that definition, I'm woke. What woke has... And what's happened to the word, it's been hijacked by people who are now behaving like right. fascists. They're and, behaving and, like and, fascists. And because so you, the type and, of thing and, that and, Nigel and, Khan, and, who's a professor, and, for goodness and, and, sake, and because you stuff. know that, because you know that, you shouldn't use it the way you use it. Well, I because don't... you know that. OK. okay. I, and, 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 and because, in this, because in this, you know that. Bonnie, your historical point's well taken, but in this context... 
woke refers to, but to, don't, to but, but, but a, a you, contemporary, but you as a contemporary historian, movement. Yes, but you as a historian, yeah, right. I want to bring you in, can I want correct to bring, it. Okay, I want to bring in Douglas Murray. You, you could go that way, but since it's being used as a badge of honour well, for people... Well, you shouldn't do it. You I think better. it's become literally a badge of the new fascism. It's, it's basically people now embrace the word woke themselves to say, I'm so woke that if you say anything I don't like, I'm going to ruin, shame, vilify... But, Pierce, you have the power to instruct people about where... The word oh, I've, came I've from. I wrote a whole book about it, okay. Bonnie. Then, then you shouldn't use Bonnie, it. Bonnie, you wrote, shouldn't use it that way. Bonnie, I wrote a book then called Wake Up. Then you shouldn't. Literally, use it. I wrote a book. It's the number one you bestseller. Should, you shouldn't use B the Bonnie, word the, okay, that the, way. The mean, Still available in all good books. Mean, you, unlike you, Nigel's, the, the, which got cancelled. You shouldn't the use the word Bokery. that way. I want to bring in Douglas Bonnie, Murray. I want, the meaning of words changes according to time. Time out. I want to bring in Douglas Murray. He's been waiting very patiently. Douglas, where are we with this? Where every single aspect of our history. I'm sitting here with an eminent professor whose book about colonial Britain was, was banned by its own publishers because woke employees rattled their little oversensitive snowflakey cages <laughs> at him, right? But what does it say about society that this is happening? What does it say about history of this country, of America, and that almost everything in history now we have to feel ashamed about? Unfortunately, it says that there's one prevailing narrative and you're not meant to say anything against it, whether the prevailing narrative is true or not. And on this occasion, it, it, the prevailing narrative is not true. The prevailing narrative at the moment in Britain is a sort of import from the American culture wars where we've uh, tried to put the legacy of slavery in America over the legacy of colonialism in Britain, make it our founding original sin and derive all of our morality and our scolding of the past uh, uh, from that. I mean, we've seen uh, Sir Francis Drake is the latest uh, victim of this, or an explorer from the 1500s, gets run through our 2020s paradigm and found to be failing. Um, it's happened with uh, absolutely everyone, from Lord Nelson to Winston Churchill. And uh, I, I think this, this paradigm is wildly unfit for purpose. And the problem is, is that when anyone goes against it, as Professor Nigel Bigger has, uh, we see the consequences. And the, the problem is this, Piers. What we're suffering from is this massive ignorance in our society yeah. where very ignorant people have been grabbing the microphone and saying there's only one way to look at the past and that's with us being the very enlightened, clever, brilliant, mm. modern people and everyone in the past being guilty of sin. And the fact is, is if you say, look, we need more nuance on that, you, you get backlash. I mean, Nigel Bigger knows this because when he tried to, some years ago at Oxford, start a course in the ethics of empire, uh, uh, that was lambasted by academics. You know, if if, if academics at Oxford, including the, the then Regis Professor of Ethics, are not allowed to look at the ethics of empire, the things that were good in it, the things that were bad in it, what the moral reckoning should be. Who is meant well, to the do worst this one, if it's the worst not one to me, academics? Douglas, there was a guy, you, you'll know this story. There was a professor at a university in America, I can't remember which one it was now, but he, for 25 years, had delivered a brilliant lecture about the use of offensive language. And as part of the lecture, he would use offensive language to illustrate what he was talking yes. about. And he got cancelled because the students protested yeah. about him using offensive language. In yeah. a lecture he but delivered for a quarter of a century yeah. about the offensive th the language. Thing is, Look, there are about five different the arguments. The thing is, though, Piers, that, that, that one is a kind Douglas of... Douglas finished the, right. right. the point on that. Right. The, the, the thing with that one is, Piers, in a way that that one is a slam dunk, because it's just like, it's, it's ridiculous in a, in a course about language to sort of end up policing language like that. But, but the point about history, it can't be stressed enough, there is a very m malevolent, malign interpretation of our history in Britain that is going on at the moment. And it needs historians and others to correct it. It's not about a, a one, you know, a dogmatic narrative replacing another. Quite the opposite. It's saying there is a dogmatic and untrue narrative being pushed on British history. It's time to add some context. And the fact that there are publishers and universities and others mm. in Britain that say, we don't want that context. We want to ban that context says something so unhealthy is going on And just on in quickly, our Douglas, your response to Alan Cumming returning his, M his OBE over misgiving uh, surrounding the toxicity of the British Empire, which he apparently suddenly realised. He woke up after the Queen died and realised yeah. there may have been some issues with the British Empire, which he had had an OBE from yeah. for many years. You know, 
You know, uh, Alan Cummings, I have I infinite disdain for. I mean, he's a, he's a nasty little Scottish nationalist who lives in California and talks about how Scotland should be independent. If he wanted to jump on the anti-imperial bandwagon, he should have done it 20 years ago because the, Benjamin Zephaniah and others did this a long time ago in refusing this honour. So, I mean, I can sort of believe that Alan Cummings hadn't heard of the British Empire until this year. I sort of can believe it because he, he runs so many contradictory narratives in his head.